I'm Professor Donna Hope of the University of West Indies Mona Campus in Jamaica. My title is Professor of Culture, Gender and Society. I've written substantively about Jamaican culture, Jamaican music, gender, I've written a lot on dance hall and done a lot of research on Jamaican dance hall. I also have um, an entity called the Dance Hall Archive and Research Initiative where we do work on dance hall. We actually have some work coming up that we you will hear more about and we host seminars, we do various things and work towards disseminating information and archiving material about dancehall culture. Interesting. So yeah, I mean, let's jump right into it. Um, this post that was made about 80 to 90 percent uh, of Jamaican men in dancehall cheat and see nothing wrong with it. Um, what were your personal thoughts about it when you read the post? Well, honestly, I just saw the post as a very emotional response it was a response to incidents that had either happened to the poster or to friends or close acquaintances of the poster based on you know whatever interaction they were having at a period in time or over some period in time with dance or um, dancers in particular and so it was a very emotional for me the poster was very emotional and intended apparently to give information to others who were being warned to be careful about what was happening okay um a lot of people felt that the way she chose to go about doing that was very damaging to the culture, to brand dance hall, to brand Jamaican male. Uh, was it damaging? From well, your I, perspective? well, I think that because because people are always careful to not generalize or stereotype individuals, and because of the way the post was constructed, and remember that the um, Carrie, she's not a native English speaker, and so the post was done in her native language and then translated into English. Um, by herself and someone else and so the meanings that came out of it suggested that this was referring to all dancehall men dancehall culture broadly speaking all dancehall dancers maybe and generally Jamaican men so again there could have been some stereotyping and generalization that could have been avoided because this has implications for how people view the culture view the end the industry dancehall dance industry and view Jamaican men overall 80 to 90 percent an extremely high percentage perhaps not many as many as that again scientific research would have given you a clearer indication but as i said at the outset this was a very emotional response to incidents that had happened either to the poster or to the friends and close acquaintances of the poster, and that i think colored the way that the post was made many people label this post as racist um do you think that view was warranted well, and, and the discussions on racism and the way that racism works itself are, you know, a broad based decision, discussion. But I look, when you look at it from different perspectives, you could label it as racist because of the way it was done. And I get the impression from a lot of the discussion that maybe the intent was not that, but the way it was done and the, the implications, again, for a body of black men and black people from someone who is not black, not Caribbean, not Jamaican, has a lot of meanings for how race and racist um, thought are going to be discussed and decided upon. So in a real sense, yes, many people could and have decided that this post has racist over overtones and racist undertones. Interesting. It seems like uh, to me that the point that she was trying to convey in the post was was kind of lost in, in a lot of the noise and the uproar from the way it was executed. Do you think there's any value in her post? The challenge with the, with the, the post is that we are living in a very um, social mediated age. So everything is done through social media and the dance hall dance industry started a lot of it on YouTube and Facebook. Now it's mainly on Instagram and those locations. And so it's a, it's a very emotive and a kind of personal discussion, but it is put in a very broad um, framework so the platform is broad it's very accessible to everyone democratically even if your page is private it can be shared it can be screenshot so again the, the execution of it um, create I mean it has a significant ripple effect across many borders languages everything and so it people responded very much to that in a very clear way people were upset people are angry and it has continued to, 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 to spur discussion even to until today we are speaking about it Mm. Why is it important to have these discussions? Because <laughs> this, this, this post has literally spawned many discussions since then uh, that are still happening. And, and there's a lot of people who are saying, why are we even 
you know, why give her a platform? Why discuss it with her? Why are we still talking about this? Uh, let forget her and let her disappear into oblivion. I don't, I, you know, and the thing is that because of the way um, the discussions have gone, they, they, they focus in me a lot on the individual who has made the post. Um, but really, the reason why the post has gotten so much traction and has created such a huge ripple effect is because of the, re it, the way it resonates eh? across people's emotions, one, but also feelings and the structures that people live inside of, the type of country they live in and how they have to live in those countries. Who is rich, who is poor, who is black, who is white, who is not white, who is colored, all of these things. And it cuts across all countries. I mean, people in all different countries would have some kind of, it would resonate to them in a very clear way. And this is why people are still continuing to speak about it. So it is less about the individual and trying to chastise the individual poster, but more about realizing and continuing to recognize that discussions about race, about power, about gender, and about people's relationships inside of these structures have meaning and value for how people are going to operate with each other. Eh? And this is why people are so, there's a, people are hurt, people, some people are angry, and people are going to continue to discuss it. Less about the individual, but more about how people have to live their lives and what decisions they are going to make because of who they are and the color of their skin. Speaking of you know, people being hurt and angry, um, from, from my observations personally, it seems that a lot of the most vehement and hostile reactions have actually come from other foreigners. Uh, yeah, Jamaicans have, have been upset, but you know when you look at the majority of the people taking her on and kind of going hard at her a certain way, it's almost predominantly foreigners. Why do you think this is? Um, and, and I'm a cultural studies researcher, among other things, but I do a lot of work with politics and power. I, one of the recent things you'll see, you know, um, Andre, um, Sandri, and I saw this coming up in the discussions you had with Carrie, the poster, is that um, individuals who are siding with her and agreeing with the post would do it off site, off the internet, because they understand the kind of heat that this has generated and will generate and the, the way that it can impact on their own connections with the culture, connection with people in the culture. Um, and so <laughs> the, 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 the way that people, um, in a sense, respond to these things has a lot to do with who they are and where they are positioned. So people who have a higher positioning culturally, financially and otherwise, are able to speak more voluminously about it. So they can level any accusations, quarrel about it. Some other people are going to feel a little hesitant. They might feel that they are going to lose rewards and opportunities if they speak too much against the situation using the language that they are going to have at hand, which is going to be very personal again, very emotional. So you find that people are more hesitant from this side of the world to come out and level real accusations and chastise the discussion also, many people are not equipped as well with the language that is necessary to, this, to, to tackle this discussion, to flesh out some of the underlying themes that are coming up, you know. People ha are more empowered. You're more empowered. You're coming from a society that, is, that has more resources, and therefore you are also a person in terms of the racial structures global, globally who would have more opportunities. Remember, you know, Sanjay, that um, dancers from Europe, Russia, and elsewhere, all of them, Everyone comes to Jamaica without needing a visa to come here. Everybody else comes here without needing a visa to get here. So you can just take up your passport. At one point, some people didn't even need a passport to come to Jamaica. They just came here because we are a tourist country, tourist centric country, we are a third world country. And so we are open to receiving non-Jamaicans and especially white foreigners. Even that alone sends you a message. I've definitely seen what you just mentioned as well, and I also feel like there's another dynamic that's also coming into play as well too, where you have a lot of people just kind of um, mindlessly echoing the, the sentiment of their favorite Jamaican dancers. There's a little bit of, I think personally, of a, little, of a, a yes man mentality when it comes to the overseas, um, the overseas demographic as well too. Um, a lot of people, if they feel like their local dancers are offended, they're going to speak even louder as well, too. I, I've noticed in the community, oftentimes. You mean that they are protecting their own family or their own 
when I use the word family, I speak about the dance hall in dance industry as dance hall family because of the way that the connections have been forge across borders. So people have crews and camps and most of the dancers who come to Jamaica from outside usually are connecting with different dance groups and camps and, and see themselves as a part of those groups, you know. So in a real sense, they will also respond to that. But again, also many dancers who are coming from outside of Jamaica are have some of the educational tools and the language tools to deal with the discussion in a way that many of our dancers unfortunately are not able to do so and so they are going to be both willing and able to speak more vehemently about it this is a fact that that, that on you know oh for sure there's no yes. question of that there's so this no is a part of the way that the discussion has gotten gone yeah. you know in that way yeah there's no question of that but uh, then there's also a lot of uh, the discussion has also taken on a lot of a emotional turn rather than a rational turn. So a lot of people are even attacking her in return emotionally and not necessarily looking at the situation maybe rationally and logically as well too, but that's just my personal perspective on it. Um, in the future, when foreigners are faced with negative issues that they would like to address, how would you think would be an acceptable way for them to do this? Well, it's not really about what I think, you know, we are in the 21st century. This is, um, you know, the second decade or heading into the third decade of the 21st century. Um, people, young people, many of who were not even born when dancehall culture was formed in Jamaica. It was formed at around 1980. This is now more than four decades later. These are people in their early 20s. They live on social media. They do everything on social media. They are going to go on social media and continue to express whether they are happy, they are sad, they are angry, they are hurt, they are celebrating, they are advertising, whatever they are doing. They are doing it on social media. And so this is where a lot of the discussions are going to take place. And this is where, for example, even our own discussion here is going to end up somewhere in the Internet, on the Internet, because this is where young people coalesce and this is where it's going to happen. And I know that in the future it's going to continue that way um, because this is how people have been relating to each other and sharing their thoughts and their emotions and their ideas. That's where they're going to go. Sorry. Yeah, I don't necessarily say anything wrong with that. But let's say in the, in the future... Uh, uh, like, is there a way, like, so, so moving forward, we, it, you know, it would be good for, like, people to kind of understand that, okay, maybe if I do experience a negative thing in the culture, like, is there an okay way for a foreigner to express that? Uh, you know, if, whether it's on social media or, how, like, let's assume it will be on social media. How, or put it this way, I guess if I rephrase the question a little bit, how could Kari have made this statement without being as offensive as she was? I have no idea because let me say see, this is the thing that we are hindsight you know is always 2020 and we are able to look um, at an event or an activity after the fact and make all the kinds of judgments and criticisms and give the best advice as to what could have happened but again this was a, this was something that obviously comes out of a series of experiences that all came together and then she felt compelled to speak about it to an audience and several audiences she probably thought she was speaking to one audience, but it would have it's something that would have reached multiple audiences and continue to reach multiple audiences. And the reason why it is continuing to have so much traction is because it is not just about men and women and the kinds of challenges that people face in relationships, whether they are in the dance or dance industry, they are in Jamaica, they are in the US, they are in Europe. People face problems in relationships all the time. It is about people from one particular culture, from one particular country that has a particular history and a particular form, looking at themselves through the lenses of someone else, other people from another country, another territory, another racial grouping that looks very different and also has connected with our culture in different ways. So you, you have a lot of heat being generated, it's very explosive, and people are going to again continue to, to, to expand on the discussion. That is the reason why. So. Social media is going to be the place. The internet is going to continue to be the place. COVID-19 has assured and ensured that we are stuck there for quite some time. And that's why we're continuing to use the, um, the different stages online. So basically, then, when, when, when they make these posts and address the issues that they need to address, uh, it just that they would have to be very careful of the generalizations and the, the language in which the message is coded. Well, you know, Sanjay, honestly, um, because we live in Jamaica, and Jamaica is a society that has undergone 
you know, black people coming to Africa, um, slavery, colonialism, classism, race, all the things are here. Jamaicans are, even if they are not trained in a school, learning it at school, Jamaicans have the experience and the historical um, references to how harmful these structures are. Individuals who come from a society that, um, um, as um, but the, the post opened in one of the discussions I saw, don't even have any black people, which I know is not true, um, but, doesn't, but has such a minute percentage of people of color and is not exposed to information about the culture and the country that underscores the kind of realities that people have to face will more than likely not be as sensitive as you would want them to be. I think the way forward is for, for people to either expose themselves to or be exposed to a deeper understanding of Jamaica, of dancehall culture, of the people who live here when they um, make a decision to become a part of our culture, when they make a decision to join us, share with us, share from us, um, you know, use what we have created to benefit themselves and to showcase who we are. So it is that I think they have a duty, we call it a duty of care, to inform themselves and educate themselves about dancehall culture, about the dancehall dance industry, about Jamaica, about the history of Jamaica, when they decide to become a part of the industry and the fraternity and the broader dancehall family. That's something that they really should do because if they do that, then they would be far more sensitive and balanced in discussions like these. And you have women and men in the dancehall dance industry from outside of Jamaica who are white women, white men, who are more balanced because they have taken the time or they have been exposed to the information whether through their studies or through their own you know search um, we have some of the, like Latonia and other people I know have classes that try to show people and teach people about Jamaica and Jamaican culture and dance all and the history and the development people must expose themselves to these things and this is what will help people to have a better understanding of and therefore deal with situations like these with more sensitivity. And when they have done that process, that due diligence that you speak of, uh, do you think it's then also important for them to raise these topics that also affect them when they join the community? It is important, you know, because remember that the view, your people are inside of a culture or an individual would have their perspectives that would be different. So I'm looking on, I can't understand the perspective, for example, of someone from outside. I've done a lot of interviews with many dancers from outside as a part of the project I've been working on for the, a book I'm writing. So I have a, a, a little better picture then of the, the expectations that people would have had put before they came to Jamaica and what would they would have thought about Jamaica. I've met, worked with some of the dancers who have studied and written master's theses and all of that coming out of the Jamaican situation. Some who are still writing, people have written their bachelor's theses. And remember, many of these women are tertiary educated women. So again, there's that educational imbalance. And so a lot of women have exposed, and men have exposed themselves. So I have met with people and I have an understanding, but in reality, the intricacies and the things that happen on the ground on a day-to-day -day basis at one of, for example, at one of the dance hall hostels, at one of the HQs, the things that people go to when their tours are happening. Um, many people have spawned relationships. We have children being born of these unions. There are things that happen inside of people's lives. That's personal. These are things that they are going to speak about on social media. And it is only that we ask, for example, for sensitivity. There are things that are happening even as we see that people don't speak about on social media. Um, they have to work it out on their own. So again, dealing with the issues in a way that it doesn't, as we say, implicate an entire culture, an entire country, an entire industry is probably a good way to start. What are some of the lessons that we can learn from this experience as a community? You know, there, are, there have been calls along the way to professionalize the dance or dance industry because it has grown and expanded since it really took shape and form just around, it took shape and form around 2012, to, you know, around that time when it really took shape and form. Um, and um, I think it's a call that dancers and the people involved in the different aspects of the industry should really have some kind of cohesive understanding of themselves. Because even though you're operating as one um, entrepreneur or one crew or one group, other people looking on from the outside see all of you as one industry. You are all, and this is a thing that I find that for our culture here in Jamaica, we seem to be unaware of that. The, the view from the outside looking in is not belly house stands alone. 
the view looking from the outside looking is that Bella House is one hostel or one location that you can go to plug into this dance hall dance industry and so people should be having I have tried to have that clarity and understand that you have to professionalize the industry you have to have standards in the industry even if you are going to be I mean people are human beings men and women are connecting across you know in different ways even if you are going to navigate relationships and have them understand that you are also doing so on behalf of the industry and that it will resonate and come back to the industry like you're pointing that way you know your point one finger forward the other one is looking back at you so we have to be very clear on the perception of jamaica jamaican dancehall industry jamaican dancehall dance industry jamaican men jamaican women jamaican dancers that are, will be coming along with all of the other connections that are being made. So we have to professionalize the industry. We have to standardize. I think there's need for some level of standardization in terms of rates, in terms of what you are supposed to expect, and we have to work towards that. And also, we have to ensure, as Jamaicans and as people involved in the industry, that we share information, not just about what we have to offer, you know, your own dances, your own rates for your classes, your own rates for your hostel, but also about the culture as a very, very important foundation for what people are taking part in. Lastly, you have a lecture coming up with Queens on Top. Um, tell us what we can look forward to on that. Well, um, Aleva Neil um, is one of the women from Europe who I have worked with and who I have met um, as a part of my work and whose interviews are going to be a part of the book and publishing. So people like Aleva Neil, Maggie, Diana from Portugal, Joanna Sweden, a lot of women. So um, Aleva Neil had reached out to me because the need was seen coming out of a lot of these discussions from before to have information made available, particularly to Europe, to that end, about culture, you know, cultural appropriation, the way racism might be there, you might not be able to see it, that kind of thing. So what my lecture will do, and it's on the 20th of February, 7 p.m. CET, which is 1 p.m. Jamaica time, so you can, you know, figure it out. Um, and you can get information from um, Queens on Top. But what I'm going to try and do in that time, and I'll also answer questions, is to sort of speak to some of the issues about how cultures are used and treated and also how even when an individual means well, because many of the people who are involved with the industry from outside mean well, that you have to understand your own positioning. Who are you? What do you bring? And who? what are you carrying? How are you perceived? What are the privileges, Sanji, that you are living within and that come forward that will help you to understand how to position yourself and, for example, how to write a post like that? So um, really, it's, it's, I find that the posts and the discussions are a sort of moment that we can look at what do we learn from the moment and what can we teach based on what needs are, the obvious needs are. So talk about racism. Many people don't speak about the issues that are underlying structures that are raced. What are these issues? How are they going to be discussed with, inside of the dance or dance industry? How does it impact on the bodies of black men and women? Or you go down to one of the parties in the night or one of the hostels or one of the classes and see them providing their culture on their backs for your own benefit, your own pleasure, your own you know, opportunity to have fun, your own opportunity to make a living. How do you then understand that in terms of what the lives of people, black people, poor black people in a country like Jamaica in the centuries that we have you know been here in the 21st century and what came before so i want to talk and try to put that as much in a snapshot and then have some discussion around it and provide probably um information about possible readings that could also be useful trying of course to break it down from the academic high sounding discussion to something that is very accessible to the individuals who will take part in the discussion me personally, like, like I said, I definitely feel like a lot, there's a lot of lessons that were uh, uh, available to be learned from this experience, but everybody's just so busy, like, lost in the dramatics of the whole thing. That people are angry, people are upset. And at the, when you get, because when you get emotional, you know, you generate more heat than light, you see? So there's a need to shed more light, but people are angry. But inside of a lot, because some of the posts that I looked at, you know, there were people trying to shed light. But so many people talking and, and writing, you have to, because I sat and read through a whole heap of the responses. And there were people there, some of the people were there trying to shed light on the sure. discussion. 
But again, because the post is what is there at the top, people look at the post and most people are not going to read through all of the responses. Yeah. You see, but people are trying to shed light. But the format, the format they have to do the way you're doing it, for example, is trying to shed light on the, a discussion that is very heated. And so, for the, the talk we're going to have, will be trying to shed light. And, be, and again, it's an opportunity. We have to give thanks for at least that the opportunity is created for this discussion to be had in a very open way, and then we can move forward. So it's very important that you have the, opp the opportunity is always important. So you're stepping and use the opportunity. Other than that, people probably would never, we wouldn't even bother to talk about it in that way. Nobody ever just go along merrily doing the thing. Yeah. Yes. True. Serious. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a good opportunity. Really?